Is there a more successful personality in the history of film? Uh, you know him as the Academy Award winner for True Grit, and I've just had now two or three days to uh, get to know him, and he really is like he is. Do you know what I mean by that? Well, I'll explain it later. It certainly is a great pleasure for me to be able to say, ladies and gentlemen, John Wayne. expect him to be that big, did you? You're six, two, four. four. Six, four. Six, four. You like Listen, that, Listen, huh? I, I look... Yeah? Well, let's... John, you just gonna have to sit here and enjoy it. Well, I'm, I have to look up at every basketball player in the country. I, I thought... I feel short now. No, I thought maybe that the... You know, the way they shoot movies, you know, they put the camera on the ground and shoot you next to an oak tree or something, but you, you, you really are a very, very big fellow. And you are, I don't know if I've ever seen you on a talk show. You don't kind of, you, you hate this, don't you? Come on. No, I do not hate that? it. I've gone on, I've been on Merv Griffin two or three times. Have I've you? been on with uh, Carson. They treat you all right? Well, yeah, they, you know, I'll give it back. Do you? <laughs> yeah. How does it feel to be imitated by all those people? Is that? Uh, well, it's, it's hard to keep up my image. I can't imitate all of my imitators. <laughs> so I'm afraid they won't know who the fellas imitated. Rich and Gorshin and yeah. Viner and all of it. Who, uh, how, how would you imitate John Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> Just, Just one line. line. Just one line. Well, all right, Pilgrim. <laughs> you know, uh, he went shopping over the weekend. Was it right over the weekend in downtown Chicago? Yeah. And if you don't see him, which is very hard not to do, heads turn just because of the voice. Uh, uh, all over uh, Michigan Avenue. <laughs> Was that bad? That's a bad uh, The uh, You got the Oscar for True Grit. You are uh, certainly one of the most remarkably successful people in the history of this, of your business. And I just, you're a sort of an unassuming fellow, you know? I, you're just sort of standing there. I get the feeling that you're not quite sure what... I'm not quite sure about anything, particularly in front of a bunch of women. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you have a, did you fight as a kid? Did you ever really give somebody a shot? My name was Marion Michael Morrison. Do you think I ever fought? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you had to compensate for the name, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the, you had a, a horse, uh, as I recall, that you... Uh, Named Marion? No, no. <laughs> oh, but you did have a... Didn't you... You had a horse as a kid, didn't you? A skinny... Oh, horse? yeah. I had to go to school out in Mojave Desert. I had to go to school on a horse. He was kind of skinny, so they called me skinny for a while. Let me get you... Can I ask you some heavy stuff? You don't yeah, know, sure. You know? Go ahead. You don't get mad at me, will you? Not very <laughs> often. <laughs> That's the biggest well, hand... The I... only thing that's quick-tempered in this state is the weather. Yeah. I can't believe it. Man, they got mad at somebody yesterday. <laughs> it was. It just went all of a sudden. Wham. It was like the end of the world. You want Ronald Reagan to be president. Of course. You working out there, or how do you feel about it? Is it going to well, happen? I think, uh, I think he's going to have a tough uh, job, particularly on the press. I see yesterday, you know, when the president's uh, camp won a state that was in the president's pocket by by 53 to 47 percent they made a big hollabaloo its headlines and now who what state you, you mean uh, 
Well, it, in this case, it was um, uh, Illinois, wasn't it? Well, uh, 40, uh, Reagan got 40, a little over 40% of the vote here. 43%, yeah. Okay. And your, and your point is what? That that's okay? That this, well, that this made a great big thing. Now it's headlines, Cronkite and his lesser satellites say he's all through. Now, last week he won one state, uh, uh, what was it, 92 to 8 percent. Mm -hmm. Another one he won 75 to 25 percent. Another one he won by a big majority. Even in the Tribune, it was on page 16, and in the, in the more uh, liberal papers, it was on 39 at the bottom of a feature on somebody else. I mean, uh, uh, I just can't understand how the one thing can be so important and the other not. So you, th you think he's got a real shot then? You know, this is no, this is... I think that the man has great capabilities. I don't know whether he has a shot at it at well, all. But is it politically realistic to expect him to get anywhere against an incumbent president who has not been doing so badly Elected? in the... Sure, yeah, well, or, or nominated, nominated. Let's talk about the nomination. That's the first, Malcolm. Well, I think that he'll be a, a noticeable figure at the convention, let's mm -hmm. say. You're not altogether uncomfortable with Gerald Ford, are you? Not at all. I'm, I just, uh, his, his camp uh, is what bothers me. I mean, he has no followers or no team. They're all manipulators. He, he makes a statement and they manipulate something around and he has to vacillate and say that that's, uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, change his point of view. I, I feel sorry for him. He's a terrific guy, but uh, I'd just like to see him... Uh, change the whole uh, setup, and I don't think that it will happen with uh, Jerry Ford. And I like him very much personally, and I don't think we're going to go down the drain if uh, he becomes president. I just happen to be for the change, and I feel that, uh, that the other man proved himself in California. He mm -hmm. took it over as a bankrupt, a bankrupt state, and... Uh, Eight years later, turned it back with a $4 billion surplus. He put men in charge of the damn bureaucracies yeah. that didn't want the jobs rather than somebody that was trying to build up the bureaucracy to make themselves important. Yeah. They gave him back the key to some of those offices and said, you don't need it. He just did a fine job. He came up with a, with a law for the state where you could only tax the people up to 6% of the state uh, income. And uh, this was a voice from the wilderness, you know. But the liberals managed to, to aberrate that to where the people didn't realize what he was doing. He had uh, emergency rules in where they could tax for a couple of years more than the 6%, but if they did it longer than that, it had to go back to the people. Well, this is the only way we're going to clear up bureaucracy and big government and, and unimportant uh, branches that develop in order that a man can feel more important in his particular bureau. But you've got some friends who are liberals. And you, you I'm should... liberal. Come on. <laughs> you're liberal. Of course. I'll bet you $100 you're not going to vote for Tom Hayden in California. Well, I don't think that Tom Hayden is liberal. I, I understood liberal as, maybe I read the wrong dictionary, but I thought that a liberal was a man who would listen to everybody's point of view and then make up his mind what he was going to do. I made up my mind pretty fast, but... <laughs> but I, I don't know of any of these so-called liberals that listen to anything but their own mouth. Pardon my English. <laughs> um, Got a thousand questions out there. Let me just uh, pick up some of the loose ends here. You know, you uh, your movies have had such an impact on our on our culture. There's uh, <clears throat> you are a kind of a you know you're the well. I hope the shooters has some kind of an impression on it. I hope enough people go to see it. That <laughs> that's uh, Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart. Richard Jimmy Boone? Stewart. Warren McCall. Richard Boone. Hugh O'Brien. And a young fellow named Ron Howard, who I think is as good an actor now, is this as the I happy, ever worked with. Happy Days Trip? Yeah. He, he's just wonderful. Duke. I'd be proud to have him be my boy. Duke. The I'd be prouder if I was his age and he was my brother. 
<laughs> okay, here's the picture now. I want you to help me out. How do you... All right. That the John Wayne movie is a... conveys simple justice, you know. That's the way you solve problems. And the, and the feeling that you're such a popular guy that out there in America, there are a lot of people that want us to solve problems that way right now, and they're forgetting about the Constitution. You keep writing first. me letters and telling me that that's what it should be done. Keep talking, and I say, right back and say, well, why don't you guys talk once in a while? You know, I, I don't want to be the target. You think it's, do you, are you, do you think about that, that uh, violence is the way to, that's the, that's the Well, violence that is not, is not, that's uh, not it at all. I naturally have, uh, due to the fact that I have been in westerns, which is our folklore, in which men were fighting against the elements. Uh, very few of them had any trouble where they had to go lie down on a couch. They were too busy staying alive. And naturally, uh, you'd get the impression of, uh, of uh, quick, cold, uh, violent reaction. But actually, in my pictures, it's been more illusion than than violence in the present-day pictures where they put a liver, a calf's liver on somebody and put an electric uh, charge in there and blow it up in slow motion. Naturally, that, that is, is a bad taste. That's why I hate the way they've rated pictures because uh, before it depended on a man's capabilities, his, his uh, good taste, and uh, his... Uh, how far he'd gambled to make a risque picture. And his peers would only give him the seal if, uh, if they felt that it was worthy of uh, the name motion picture. You've shot more people, though, than anybody in the history of the business. So. But you've never seen me in the same shot shoot a man. It was always, it was a rule then that you could only, you shoot like this and then you cut to the guy taking it. You I mean, mean you couldn't have a two shot of you shooting? Never, him? never. Up to, uh, uh, let's say, the days of Valenti, who is now the... You know, they're trying to pass an ordinance in Chicago wherein violence, ultra-violent movies would be reviewed and so on and rated, and young children would not be permitted to see them. What do you think? Well, I don't know if they're going to let them go in and watch not their father and mother, but somebody else's father and mother in bed. I think uh, they ought to let them watch somebody getting hit. Yeah, some of those movies are. You, have you ever seen a dirty movie? <laughs> Listen, I saw them in stag shows, yeah. and they weren't nearly as bad as some of the things that are out today. Where I try to see them all. <laughs> One more before no, I... No, it's not a spectator sport. I think it's ridiculous. Section 8. <laughs> Sex is not. Yeah. You wouldn't know. Uh, do you imagine if I could... Do you realize what you could do to the circulation of a magazine? What? <laughs> Too many calluses. Yeah. We'll be back in just a moment with John Wayne. That's the Duke, but you knew that, didn't you? Yes. Um, I would like to ask you if you had trouble when you first became a superstar coping with your success if there was some sort of uh, ego or personality evolution with women falling all madly in love with you and <laughs> people I was very you. lucky at the, in my career. I had a lot of very stable people in the business who were friends of mine. And every time that I got out of line, John Ford or Howard Hawks or Henry Hathaway or Harry Carey had belt me over the head. So it took me a long time to find out that I was a star. You, uh... Is that a short enough answer? <laughs> yes, that... Yes. Do you have any regrets about your career? Something you wish you had done that you didn't? No, I'm uh, quite happy with it. Maybe I wish I'd have saved a little money, but outside of that... 
Doesn't matter, but I don't know. I'd probably spin it the same way again. Why do they call you the Duke? Because I had a dog, an Airedale dog, when I was a little kid. Is this working? Yeah, that's fine. They can hear you. Excuse me. I had an Airedale dog called Duke. <laughs> and he'd follow me to school and stop at the fire station. The firemen knew the dog's name, so they called him Big Duke and me Little Duke. <laughs> that's true. Yes. Yes. So I got it. I'd like to know what your favorite book is. What my favorite book is? Yes, if you do much reading. It's got H-O-L-Y on it. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to know if you've ever done anything on the stage or if you'd ever consider it. Well, I was in high school plays and all that sort of thing, and we did a <laughs> charity thing of uh, What Price Glory uh, earlier in my career where all the... Uh, Stars in Hollywood did uh, parts, and we went over to Pasadena and around. I uh, was in the oratorical contest uh, for Shakespeare when I was younger. Couldn't remember my lines. <laughs> I don't know. I don't particularly. I kind of like it the way it is. You get another chance if you blow a line. <laughs> I should acknowledge that of the many uh, honors that you've received and the excitement that attended your visit here to Chicago. I think you've been on the front page three out of the four days you've been here. Uh, the King of Sweden was here and left. I don't think uh, many people... Uh, it's clear that Chicago got much more excited over a duke than a king. One of the... Uh, one of the things that I should... This may be a liberal press, but they're all over you, my friend. Boy, your interviews, pictures... Yeah. Yeah, they've been great to me, too. You have also been the recipient of the Entertainer of the Year Award from the University of Notre Dame Club of Chicago, in right. which I proudly claim membership and offer you once again my congratulations. Why'd you, why'd you grow the mustache? What? Why did you grow the mustache? Was it for a million dollars. <laughs> no, it's for this, this picture that I just finished, and I'm... Uh, still out trying to promote the shooters because they're going to release it. We finished it two weeks ago and they're going to try and release it by July the 26th, so it's going to be pretty hard for us to get the word around that it's coming out. I don't want them to say, gee, that was a nice picture, and everybody says, where, when was it playing? You know, and it's gone and nobody sees it, so that's why I left it on. That and the fact that I kind of like to be Buffalo Bill. <laughs> How did your career in show business begin? Well, I guess the first time that I was really recognized in show business was I was going to the University of uh, Southern California, and we just started having uh, good ball clubs or being recognized by the East, Middle, West, and South. And so the business uh, became very interested in they have got us jobs during the summer, and I went on John Ford's set. And they'd had a habit of, they say to you, oh, you play football. And, well, how do you get down? See, so you get down, and they'd push and pull you. And this got a little boring. So when they'd ask me, I'd just brace myself on all four limbs, which is not the way, position to be in if you're in a football game. And Ford had played a little ball, so he said, well, stop me, and he just kicked my feet out from under me, and my face went down in that so-called mud that was made of plaster on this phony mountain in the, in the set. And I said, well, let's do her again. And he started around me, and I whirled and kicked him, hit him right in the chest. Down he went. There was a dead silence. <laughs> and he started to laugh. There was one time when I was pretty or not in the motion picture. <laughs> While I'm back here? Yes. Are you enjoying yourself in Chicago? I certainly am, and I'm enjoying myself here. Have you been to Greek Town yet? To what? Greek Town. I've been to Greece, but I haven't been to Greek Town. No, you haven't been to Greek Town. <laughs> well, you've been everywhere else in this town. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'd like to know how many movies have you made? Well, I've made uh, over 200, if you consider the serials and... Uh, four-and-a-half-day wonders that we made at the beginning of my career. 
Did you hurt yourself in The Quiet Man? No. No, that was an easy fight. That was an easy fight. You have hurt yourself, though. Well, you know, you get somebody, an amateur, you're working with an amateur, and you're, you know, in the business of hitting at someone and not uh, touching them. Sometimes they uh, come a little closer than you expect, knock you down. But that's all right. It's worth it. Good money. <laughs> uh, how many children and grandchildren do you have? Well, I have seven children and 20 grandchildren. Do they want to be Don't ask me to name them. Do they want to be in movies? I don't know. I suppose everybody wants to be in movies. It seems like everybody has two businesses, theirs and mine. Thanks. Yes, sir. Of all the movies that you have made, sir, uh, which is your favorite? Well, you like different pictures for for different reasons. I loved uh, Stagecoach, naturally, because I stepped on that stagecoach and it's carried me a long ways. I liked Tatari, which was a picture we made in Africa, because I had a three-month safari free. You know, I mean, rich men don't get that, you know. And uh, The Quiet Man, because I got to work with all these... I got to work with all the, the uh, Abbey players and uh, <clears throat> some forebears of my own family. Yes, sir. Uh, do you have a favorite co-star? Well, um, I like to see a good-looking woman, obviously. <laughs> you know, I, I'm political enough not to answer that question. <laughs> How do you feel about the women's movement, uh, Duke? Do you? Uh, I think it's great. I think they should be paid whatever the man gets if they do his job. But I don't see any reason for him taking over some of the jobs that the uh, more uh, violent people of the movement would would have you do. I know, you know. I don't think they should be out digging ditches or in my business they. Work as a grip, let's say, which has a lot of heavy work. Or carrying the hammer. The hammer looks pretty good hanging on them, but <laughs> the fellows have to stop their work and come over and help them when there's anything uh, heavy to do. I don't think that's uh, necessarily fair, but I do think they should get, uh, you know, the same kind of money that a man would get if they're doing his kind of a job. Uh, I think, you know, Texas is... It's got a big uh, swing down there now. This fellow that I know that has a good hunting dog, he likes to go hunting all the time, was telling me that uh, it's, it's really hit in his hometown. He has to put his wife up with his favorite dog now in the truck. <laughs> I don't know what's tomorrow. You never, there's just going to be no end to it. Catherine Hepburn, did you like her? Loved her. W w were, you, uh, were you a little... Were you a little nervous meeting her, and was she nervous meeting him? There had to be all the publicity and... Yeah, well, you know, there's another thing. It, damn politics comes in. I, I'm not... I've been for five Democrats and five Republicans or something in my life, but I'm supposed to be a right-wing extremist <laughs> Republican, and uh, she was uh, noted for being a little further the other way. And uh, so when we first went on the set, there was a sort of quiet, and uh, it was stated that there would be no press on the set, and I finally said, well, can I have the couple come out and see me? And she relented and said yes, and the first fellow that came out uh, said, uh, well, how is it working with Catherine Hepburn? I said, well, I'm sure that Spencer Tracy and uh, Humpy Bogey would be envious of me if they were here now working with this wonderful personality in this really professional uh, actress. I said, there's only one thing wrong. He said, what's that? And I said, well, she's a little more conservative than I. <laughs> but who isn't? <laughs> well, from then on, there was no trouble. She belly laughed on that and answered. It took 40 minutes to think of an answer. And from then on, the set was open. And 
She's a delightful woman. I'll is she co that. I can't imagine directing you two. I mean, well, you, who's the poor guy that had to come in there and tell you did, two? What? He was a poor guy, and he was a poor director. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was, was kind of new around the business. Oh. And, How old and there's he? some question about, you know, his capabilities. But uh, the scenes we were in, I think, turned out pretty well. We're in Chicago with the Duke, and we'll be back in just a moment. John Wayne is with us here in Chicago, and uh, <laughs> hi, I'm glad you waited. Are you there? Hello? I'm on the phones, guys. Go right ahead. Can you hear me? I'll wait for you. Yes, ma'am. Are you optimistic about the future of America? I'll always be optimistic about the future right up to when we stumble and fall down. <laughs> Duke, you have been with one lung since 1963, four, I don't know, someplace back there. What's, uh, what's different? Do you, do, well, does, do you take the stairs slower I, or? I don't, I don't uh, chase girls quite as fast. <laughs> In other words... No, it's, yeah, it slows you down. It's, let's face it, but I was very lucky in that the first picture I did after I had the operation, which was two months later, I had a fellow directing me, Henry Hathaway, who had had cancer, and he knew better than to pamper me. So in February, at 7,000 feet in cold water, he made me jump in the water, he made me do anything that he would have, that he, they would have expected of me were I not uh, in that condition. And I think it was the best thing that ever happened because I never got that feeling of, oh, geez, take it easy and you know, we've, you've had a lung out. Hmm. Matter of fact, they were tougher on me. He, she wants to know if you're smoking again. No, I did afterwards. Uh, I don't know what caused the cancer, but I guess smoking didn't help it any. But uh, I tried cigars about five years later, and my metabolism had changed, and, and I was allergic to tobacco, so I can't even chew now, which makes my family very happy. Yeah. <laughs> what do you enjoy doing in your leisure time? Well, I'm, I haven't had a whole lot of leisure time, but I have a, a ship, and if it's a summer vacation or Easter, I love to have the kids out on the boat and take them around to Mexico and fish and, and are whatnot. You, excuse me, are you actively campaigning for Reagan? At Am the, I what? At the, actively campaigning for Reagan at the time. Well, I haven't, uh, I haven't really had the time to actively campaign for him. I, I guess that's as active a campaigning as I've <laughs> done so far. <clears throat> but I'm merely stating uh, facts and uh, trying to let you know when he, when he was put on the, on the air the other day, they wouldn't give him the time until the last minute so that the TV guide wouldn't even be able to tell you what time he was going on. Uh, you have to give your speech to Cronkite and his lesser satellites, and, and they're all ready, so that when your speech is finished, now everybody that listens to TV hears what they have to say, and they can, by turning one little sentence, they can turn you off about reading the speech, and you never get a chance to find out what the man's point of view was or what he's, he's done in his career. And it's, uh, I think it's a little irritating. I'm sorry that the news is uh, now put in the marketplace to sell Toyotas and trucks and toilet paper. I'll be back in a moment with the Duke, John Wayne. Daily, good friends? Well, I found him to be uh, 
a wonderful character, and I tell you, this town, this town is as uh, great a city as I've ever been in, and I know good and well it's, it's because of the leadership, so he has done something that's worthwhile. I'm moving to Arizona, not far from your Pardon? ranch. I say I'm moving to Arizona, not far from your ranch. The well, how do you figure not far? It's about eight miles down the road apiece. Is that right? <laughs> well, good. Stop and in and have a cup of coffee next oh, time. Is there a house there? That's why I see the cattle and trailers, and I uh -huh. want to know if there's a house way back in there. Well, there's a house uh, further north at the other end of the ranch where my partner, Mr. Johnson, lives. Mm -hmm. Another one where our, the man that's the, that's the head of the um, purebreds has a place there with that ice box with that stuff in it from those bulls. <laughs> and my niece wanted me to ask you, she met you at Francisco Grande, Who? my niece. Uh huh. And she said you wore a great big silver buckle and she wanted to know if on it was the brand of your cattle. Yes, I have a, I have a big silver buckle called, uh, and it has a 26 bar, 26 bar, which is our uh, brand. What about the girls in the back room? <laughs> John, you want to be remembered as being feo, fuerte, and formal, uh, which means ugly, which is not true. Fuerte, strong, of course, and formal, humble, and polite. I think you should add simpatico. <laughs> Muchísimas gracias. I want to know, would you go home with me and I'll yeah. make don't say anymore. The short answer is yes. Mr. Wayne, I want to I want to thank you for all the epic movies you have made, especially The Alamo. About 10 years ago, our children had a problem in school where the teacher would not allow them in the social studies class to bring their history books into the classroom. So, about 5 years ago when your movie The Alamo came on, my girl said, Mother, what's the Alamo? And I said, what's the Alamo? Well, they never learned this in school because of this reason. And your movie taught them all the history. Now, I wonder if you realize what your epic movies are doing for the youth of America. I hope you keep no. them up. I'd like to ask you a personal question. You want to go out to lunch today? What? What? Yeah. Sure. You buying? How's your how's your love life these days? I'm 69 come next month, so. In True Grit, how did you enjoy acting with Pam da uh, Darby? She was, is she one of your youngest? Darby? Kim Darby. I Kim? Mean, she one yeah. Of your youngest? Well, she was, uh, she was a little rough to work with. She was a little rough on everybody. It was kind of new to her being so popular. But then, what the hell, we've all done it. <laughs> I'm curious to know that uh, when you were a child, did you play a lot of cops and robbers or cowboys and Indians? <laughs> yeah, sure. I didn't dream anything about motion pictures. I sure dreamt about being a cop or a robber. <laughs> when you made that movie, McClintock, and everyone was sliding down that hill into the glob, did you actually do that? Not only I actually did it, Maureen O'Hara actually did it. And I'll explain something to you. The, the stuntmen, I'd, we had taken this place and put some plaster in these things and then put that kind of mud they use in oil wells on down on <laughs> ooh, it's slimy. <laughs> and it was about 54 degrees, the wind blowing from the north and somebody had let the barbed wire fence down, so it was cold. And uh, one of these stuntmen went down to try it and he cut his head and he came back. Now they're all standing around talking about, well, I don't know, I think about 150 for this and you're gonna run, run, run. And I said, Maureen, you ready? She said, yeah. I said, get over there. She got over there. I said, stick me with a hat pin. She did, and I went, wham! <laughs> down she went, cursing at me all the way down. 
And uh, the stuntmen had to change the amount that they felt that stunt was worth. Hi, the Duke is on the line. Are you there now? Go right ahead. Are you going to give me two for two on the phones here? Is the caller there? They did, huh? I'd have waited for you. You know what's sad about that is so many people are trying to get through, and the one I push, the line is jammed. I'll be back in a moment with the Duke, John Wayne. I am sorry to say that our phone is broken. I think it's your fault, too, Duke. Yeah, too many, too many calls coming in here. I truly am sorry to all those Chicago area viewers who've tried to get in. It's not because we don't want to talk to you. Oh, yes, nobody wants to talk to me. Hi, I just would like to know, we, we, we're, a, group from, a group from Milwaukee is here. And yeah. we would like to know if you ever visited our fair city. No, I haven't, but I'd like to. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if he came into summer? I've had a lot of your products. I should, I should. That's not fair. He's got more to do than come to... The beer tastes better there, though, John. Yeah. Do you have any hints for successfully raising a family? Do I what? Have hints for successfully raising a family. No, all I know is that I have been the luckiest man in my business. I have six to seven children that I am very proud of. Four of them already grown up. And uh, I know a lot of it's luck, and I know also a lot of it is that they've felt love and security at home. That's all I can tell you. Of your children, is Patrick still making movies? Pardon? Is Pat still making movies, your son? Well, he made a picture called The Bears and I for Disney last year. But uh, business has been kind of slow for him. You know, he's doesn't, he strips well, but, I, but he won't do it. <laughs> yes. I know you find all types of women stimulating, but what You're is your right special there. attraction for the Spanish? What? what is your special attraction toward the Spanish types? Well, it seems that uh, the only times that I've been free, you know, when I'm not working, been on vacation, I've headed south. So I've seen more of them and been in closer contact with more of them. <laughs> I have in the north. Yes. As a small town Republican politician, I am proud and pleased that a man of your caliber is associated with our party, and I hope we never lose you. And but, you'll be brief. <laughs> but the reason, I'm, the reason I'm concerned, according to the press, you've recently been not only wined and dined by the mayor of Chicago, Mayor Daley, mm -hmm. who is Mr. Democrat number one of Illinois, yeah. and I hope to hear from you that you will never fail the Republican Party. <laughs> will try and never fail the wonderful country that I live in. And I will, and I will continue to respect men who I think have, are doing a good job for our country. John, what size are your boots? What? What size are your boots? My husband Ten wears 13. And a half. Ten and a half? Yeah. My husband wears 13. I was just wondering. <laughs> He's got me there. <laughs> uh, have you ever thought of uh, retiring from show business? Never thought of retiring? Oh. Never. Oh. Hi. Maybe I should, but I never thought of it. Hi. A neighbor of mine mentioned that you seem to wear the same vest in all your movies. Is this true? Well, it... You know, for a while there, I had to wear the same clothes. The pictures were made so cheaply, but now I... I don't know, I changed vests. I have two, I have two things to say. Um, I liked your movies, and I liked the part where, you know, you always came crashing in the door, and you grabbed the woman and everything like that. But why in the early movies did they have you sing? <laughs> this, this is a question that I raised to, to the producer. They had, a, they had a picture in which the uh, hero hummed every time he got mad and was gonna kill somebody. And then they put words to it. And then the 
the southern exhibitors kind of liked it, so they added another song. And the three of us that were in this thing, the fellow over here that was playing the guitar, the fellow over here that was singing, and me that had this phony thing on my lap, <laughs> were all beginning to get a little irritated with this. When I got up to four songs, I'd be running around finding a guitar tree to get a guitar. And I finally went to the boss and said, uh, I've had it. The kids now ask me to sing, you know, old silver-haired granddaddy when I get on the stage, and it's not my racket. He says, well, what'll I do? I said, go get the biggest hillbilly singer in the country and make a star out of him. And he did. It was Gene Autry. Oh. <laughs> you, uh, you like the, who did you throw on the bed the other night? Uh, well, no, wait, uh, no, the, uh, you mean here? You no, know, in the movie, when, oh. when, at the Notre Dame uh, banquet, we were watching movies. Maureen O'Hara. Movies, we, that was Maureen O'Hara. What film was that? It wasn't Quiet the Man. Quiet Man. It was Quiet Man. Huh? That's, uh. Women like that. Yeah, yeah, that was very manly. Yeah. Very, you know, you felt like, oh, John Wayne, there he goes, you know. It was just, you were known for that. My husband thinks you're great, you know. Oh, that's a man, you know, John Wayne. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, when they wrote that, uh, that particular play, when the woman slammed the door and locked it, the fellow was supposed to go over and open his uh, trunk and take out the boxing gloves that he'd used when he lost the, or when he won the championship fight and throw them in the fire to show the, how nonviolent he was. And I had a big beef with the director. I said, you know, that nobody's going to want to, you know, they won't sympathize with this character after this if he lets this woman lock a door on him. <laughs> and uh, finally, we, uh, they let me kicked the door in, and it came up with a, it was actually uh, responsible for the funniest scene in the picture when little Barry Fitzgerald bringing her things from her dowry and brings in the baby cradle and sets it down in the room and looks over and sees that broken bed. I mean, nobody ever heard what he said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you watch all of your movies and do you enjoy them if you do? A lot of stars say they don't watch them. Well, I have, I, have, I have seen all the pictures that I've made, and I think professionally it would be kind of ridiculous for me not to see them. Are you critical, or can you enjoy a movie? I'm most critical, yes, but, uh, hell, a lot of them I've enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> John, uh, what is the most dangerous stunt you've done in a movie? Talk back to... Uh, uh, Marlena Dietrich. <laughs> yes. Which director do you most admire? Well, I, uh, I'll tell you, there's a lot of wonderful directors. Mr. Ford, who was my uh, mentor, he uh, started me in the business. I had quit school and in a, in a, taking a pre-legal course at the University of Southern California because I figured that I would like to be in pictures, not as an actor, as a director. But I had such tutelage under him, and I knew his style so that he's the man that uh, most stands out in my mind. But uh, Howard Hawks probably gave me a greater boost in the business than Mr. Ford, because he admitted that I was helpful to him, and that uh, he thought I could act, which Mr. Ford let the boys around. You know, he liked the credit for that. I'd have to do a picture of him and then go back and make one of those four-day things. So, uh, you know, I have uh, different, you know, it's like anybody else. You have different feelings for different people. Henry Hathaway was been great to my career. Excuse me just a moment. I should say that you are currently starring or will be starring in the soon-to-be-released movie titled The Shootist, and we'll be back in a moment. Thank you very much. Wish you, you continued Bill. success to the Duke, and I thank Services you for joining us. Provided and promotional day, fees paid by the following. 1-800-US...